The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good uh, morning, folks. Uh, this is uh, Steve Rhodes coming to you live at 8.06 in the morning. So if you're listening in at the uh, normal uh, show hour, um, I'll uh, take care of the first 30 minutes. So between now and 8.30. And then Tommy uh, Jr., he'll go ahead and pick it up from 8.30 to uh, 9 or really 1.30 to uh, 2. I know you'll enjoy that segment as well. So um, uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and get started in these uh, markets out here. We don't have a lot of time together, so we'll try to make this as pertinent for the afternoon show as well as those that are happen that happen to be listening in live. So right now, as we take a look at the uh, markets, I'll just really take you through the process that I go through uh, each morning to help me understand what the markets are communicating uh, to us. At this stage here, uh, we're looking at the uh, U.S. equity futures. They're at the top portion of the screen, so we can see the Dow. Uh, futures are up 98 points, about four tenths of a percent. NASDAQ is up uh, 10 points now. That was, uh, had been trading uh, lower um, about uh, 10 minutes ago, I believe. Uh, it's up 10 points, trading out 11, 133. There's a new profile we'll take a look at for the NQ that is attempting to form out there. That way we've got some real clear resistance level. The S&P is up three. The uh, Russell is up six points. The uh, uh, and then if we then what I like to do is take a look at hey what's going on overseas. So looking at the core markets over here. So we've got the Shanghai was up 26 points last night. Hang Seng was down 154. The Nikkei was off 88. The uh, S and P uh, 200 in Australia was up uh, nearly, nearly 2%, 105 points out there. And right now the DAX up 19, the FTSE is up 14. So I like to really understand, hey, what's going on overseas? Now, the reason why I like to take a look at what's going on overseas, well, here's the first reason, here's the primary reason. If we take a look at global markets, so th now that you can do this on your screens at home as well. So in this case here, we're taking a look at the ETF structures for uh, nine core markets. For the U.S., I'm using the Dow. Um, and that's in the uh, by the diamonds in the upper left hand corner. The next to that we've got the UK. Uh, then next to that we've got Australia. Again, these are the ETFs. And down below we've got Canada, China, and India. And then below that we've got Germany, Japan, and then just simply emerging markets overall. Now, if you take a look at those red diagonal lines, you're going to see that globally, generally speaking, markets have been in a, a downtrend. In some cases, going back, well, it's the uh, 2011. If you take a look at Canada, here is Canada. Canada, and I'm not even going all the way back to its highs back in um, 2007. But yeah, that's the Canadian index out here. So you can see all these now, the, the indices or the, uh, yeah, the indices in essence that are not uh, trading in those descending trend lines. And you also see I've got notated out here the 2019 high. No market is ever considered to be breaking out unless it's trading above the prior year high out here. So you can see there's very few of them. Those that are would be China. That's trading above it. And Germany just slightly. That's it. The Dow Diamonds are not NASDAQ. Each market is, is totally separate here. But it's important to understand, hey, what's going on across the globe? Well, in addition to that, we can take a look at the uh, five core uh, charts out here. Here's the Nikkei. Inside the Nikkei for Japan, you'll see that this has a uh, sell the D point, a 1 to 1.272, A to B equals CD. So at the present time, this has a, a topping pattern and signal that's in place out here. If we take a look at the Hang Seng, the Hang Seng, Top with a Gartley sell pattern several weeks ago. Uh, price trade below Stevie's uh, green line. Inside the Hang Seng, price is targeting support. Support is 22,779. Again, it's just important to really understand what's going on around the world uh, because we are all connected. If we take a look at the uh, Shanghai here, this top with the TD9 count. Uh, in last evening's trading, price got up, tested and rejected Stevie's green line at 33.59. So this is still in total retracement. 
uh, mode out here if we take a look at what's going on inside the FTSE. So the FTSE's pattern is very interesting. This formed a TD9 count bottom uh, for it last week, about five trading sessions ago. But you also see that Stevie's green line has turned red. Now, I'm not referring to the horizontal lines. I'm referring to the squiggly line. That's the oscillator on change line out here. Now, when it changes colors, what we usually see over a period of sessions, I never know how many sessions, we see price and it catch up to each other. When price on a red line, when price catches up to it and then it and then um, deflects lower, it's really a bearish. Uh, it's giving us a bearish indication out here, very bearish, because what it what it's indicating to you and I is that there is a falling price oscillator below zero. Price oscillator being the difference that I'm using between the 19 to 39 day exponential moving average. However. Not so fast, you said, because what we also need to see is price close below that solid horizontal red line. 59.93.28 is the breakout level for the FTSE. So if we do see it uh, close, well, the real key now is if the FTSE closes below, oops, I mean to do that, I meant to do this, closes below the session, the lows from August the August 4th, yeah, August the 4th. The low, by the way, there is 58.5706. If it does that, close below 58. What did I say here? Uh, 58.5706. Uh, then that's going to signal that the FTSE is ready to get back to the uh, March lows out there. So the FTSE may be the indice that gives us the early signal that that's what's in play. If we take a look at the German DAX out here, you're going to see a Rhodes Mintum indicator topping pattern out here. Again, its key level of support is 12.535. Resistance for the uh, DAX is at the 12.832. Okay, so what we know here, and this is really important to get our heads wrapped around what's going on around the globe, we can now see what is exactly going on around the globe okay good we got that out of the way but it's an important thing now let's take a look at what's going on inside the US markets out here well as I had mentioned the uh, the NQ is in the process of attempting attempting is the key word here to form a new profile attempting because I'm using Stevie's advanced Doppler tool so uh, and, and we won't know until this evening about 601 to be exact whether or not well maybe I might know earlier but but at this stage here I really won't know I have a confirmation on this profile until today's trading has taken place however what we do know and this is cool so this gives you an advantage that others don't have right now and the advantage is we understand with inside the and it's only the NQ. If you take a look at the ES mini, that's in the very left hand side. The Russell, that's the very right hand side. The next to the Russell to the left is the Dow. The only one with a new potential daily profile is the NQ. Now, what that profile is telling us is where buyers and sellers have taken their stakes in the sand, so to speak. Stakes in the sand. It's steak and lobster. It's not stakes in the sand. Eh. But the stake, the line in the sand out here would be at 11205. That is resistance inside the NQ. If price is trading above that, you then at least know that the NQ is powered through where the sellers had set themselves up for the day. Support would be 10,971. Now, we were taking a look at the international indices out here, and we were looking at uh, the uh, TD9 breakout level inside the FTSE. Well, we would get a change in trend signal if we see the NQ close below 10,971, and 10,971 stands as its TAS market profile. And so for some of you out there, you won't know that until tomorrow at around 1 o'clock in the afternoon when I do the uh, live show out there. Newsletter subscribers, they'll know otherwise. So that's an important piece out here. If you take a look at the message coming from the ES, the Dow, and the Russell 2000, first price is trading above Friday's highs. That is bullish, period. There are no new market profiles out here. And so they suggest that they want to move to higher price. When we come back from this breakout here, we're going to go look at Stevie's opening range charts. We're going to get the intraday signals. What we've looked at so far today have just been daily signals. So let me give you the early, the early signals, what the markets are communicating to you and I for the equity futures. Steve Rhodes coming to you live at 814 in the morning. We'll be right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. 
Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So let's take a look at the 30-minute uh, ES mini chart out here. Again, it's 8.18 in the morning. For those of you who be listening at 1.18, thanks so much for doing so. We'll be back to regular programming tomorrow. But here's what we know as of 8.18 in the morning. This is the ES mini. You can see that this has formed a uh, really two topping signals out here. You've got wave number seven. That's letter G. You can see that at the topping screen. And this generated roads momentum indicator top out here. So that's what took place. That took place, by the way, at about... It won't be about, I'll tell you exactly when. That uh, was at 2.30 this morning when we got the confirmation of both of those patterns. Now, in this case here, price has not pushed its way all the way back to support. The real support level would be 33.40. And 33.40 is the uh, breakout area for its TD nine count pattern out here. So that is in play. You'll see other horizontal lines out here. You'll see blue, black, and uh, red. Those are representing the opening range, the 30 minute opening range levels for the uh, uh, ES Mini when uh, the U.S. opens. That was Sunday evening between 6 and 6.30. Then we had the Asian open, cash open, and then the European open. And so I always mark those. Now, what's really cool is that these levels here, they're giving you another secret. So don't, don't tell anybody about this, okay? Just please keep this just to yourself, all right? A little secret here. It'll give you an edge. If you're not interested in an edge, then, then don't listen to what I'm about to share with you. But if you take a look at these opening range levels, if you do the same thing, what they do is they help us to understand where other levels of support or resistance are. Or is today a breakout to the upside or the downside? One thing I can guarantee you, if there's going to be a breakout to the upside, price has a trade above all opening range levels. 
or those three that we looked at. And that would be 33.5450. That is the European opening range. Likewise, support is the U.S. opening range. That was last evening, and that took us down to 33.35. So price right now is just consolidating. We've got a topping signal, but no support has been taken out. No resistance has been taken out. It's just really consolidating. So then I go take a look at the market breadth. What's the market breadth for the ES Mini? Now, here's the 30-minute market breadth. Market breadth, by the way, folks, what I'm referring to is when I take a look at this market breadth indicator, this is using our TAS market profiles for the 30 minute time frame for each of the uh, instruments inside the S&P 500. And this tells us at this stage, as of 820 in the morning, how many instruments are trading above the top of the profile that would be breaking out above resistance, 293 versus trading below the bottom of the profile, that would be 60. So this is very market breadth positive. So at this stage here at 820 in the morning, I would not be anticipating that price is going to make its way down to 33.40, even though we've got that valid topping signal. Market breadth is just simply too positive. Now, I don't know whether price will be able to take out resistance out here, but as we speak at 8.21 in the morning, it'd be very difficult, even with that short-term topping pattern, to have a, a real significant uh, short bias out here. Nothing has been broken. Here's the larger uh, time frame. Well, let me get to the actual larger time frame for the S&P 500. It's your weekly, daily. You're looking in the upper right-hand corner. Uh, those, again, are those are market breadth dials. They, in essence, tell us the same piece of information. But everything is in the bullish setting out here. They're in the green setting. So that is strong and long for each of those time frames. So it really just supports, hey, we've got a little topping signal took place. Last evening, as Europe was uh, beginning, its and uh, Europe's cash market was beginning its trading out here, but has not broken the back of uh, of anything inside the ES Mini. Okay, let's not stop there. Let's go take a look at the other three because each one is giving us a different signal. Remember how we just took a look at a topping pattern inside of the ES? If we go take a look at the NQ as an example out here. Now, we didn't get a, a bottoming signal or anything. We don't have any kind of bottoming signal that took place. But what we do have are the opening range levels out here. And as we take a look at them, you want to write this down on a pad of paper. If price is trading above 11, 156.50, it's indicating that price wants to make its way up to 11.264. How the heck can you say that, Stebo? Uh, well, I just did. The reason that I would say that is 11, 156.50 is the top of the European opening range. If price can get above that, then price will want to try to make its way up to its breakdown level. Where did price last break down at? Well, that was at 11.264. It's this little green dashed line that you see across my screen out here. Likewise, if price trades below 11.073, well, then that says, uh, hey, we're going to go try to take out the lows from Friday out there. But let's go do the same exact thing. Let's take a look at the 30-minute time frame. I can only do this for the ES and the uh, NQ out here, or the S&P 500 and the NDX 100 out here. Let's put our short term, our 30 minute time frame. What you're going to see out here is that this too is in bullish mode. What I mean about that, there's 44 instruments trading above the top of their 30 minute profile for the NQ, uh, NASDAQ 100 and 18 below the bottom. So this has a bias bullish. That's using the 30 minute time frame. If we take a look at the other four time frames out here, let's pull these up on our screen. Here's what we're going to see for the an NDX 100. We're going to see that they too, meaning weekly, daily, the 240 and the 60 minute are all set to bullish mode out here with regard to its market breath. So for the NQ, the levels you're going to watch today is 11, 156, 50. It's going to be more pertinent about an hour from now as the cash market opens and 11, 073 for support out there. And then you'll know that the NQ will want to make that run to 11, 264 if it can take out that resistance level. Here's the deal. Right now at 8.23 in the morning, all the signals are pointing to that's what wants to take place. But there are those topping signals that we looked at inside the ES Mini, and so you're going to want to watch that resistance area as well. If we take a look at the Dow Equity Future contract out here, all I've got is a wave number seven. Uh, topping uh, signal out here. Price is trading with inside its opening range. Resistance, 27,471. You'll watch that. That's the top of the European opening range. Support, well, in essence, there's two levels that I would give you. The uh, uh, opening range for the U.S. market, 27,260, and then 27,293 just above that. That is the TD9 count breakout level. So there's a close below 27,260 inside the YM. The price is going to go target 27,125. This is nice. We can be precise. We know exactly where buyers and sellers where support and resistance is because this is just simply a numbers game. 
That's really all it is. We're going to boil this down to numbers, not emotional, not, uh, not nothing that's emotional out here, not I think this or I think that. It's where are buyers and sellers? Where is support and resistance? If you open up a chart, I don't care what chart it is, and you can't find support or resistance, then go sign it for Mastering Probability and do it now. Don't do it tomorrow. Don't do it 10 minutes from now. Do it now because I will teach you. I will show you tools that you can use. They are objective. These numbers that I'm sharing with you, there's nothing subjective to them. They just use a standard set of rules. Nothing is, uh, it, and so it, and they're so helpful. Take a look at the Russell 2000 out here. If you take a look at the Russell 2000, this also, like the ES Mini, top with Rhodes momentum indicator tool. If you don't know what that is, you, I will teach you that very specifically out here. Very cool tool out here. Support inside the Russell 2000 is in between 156150 and 1562.70. So you know the game plan. If the Russell closes below that, two closes below that on a 30 minute time frame, 1535.40 will be the number. Resistance out here today, 1575.80. Price can get above that. Well, it wants to run higher. So that's what's going on on the 30 minute time frame for the equity future contracts out here. Back to the daily, real quickly here before we get to a break. Today should be bar number nine of a TD9 count. Tops can form on bars eight, nine, or the bar following nine. So we could see a top inside the uh, markets, at least a short-term top. Could be longer than that over the course of the next couple of days out here. Price also moving higher, doing less relative energy. That is never good for an instrument. If we take a look at the NQ, the NQ, um, you know, may form bar number nine today. Uh, Friday's uh, candle session was bar number eight, so that would qualify as the high out there. So you're going to want to watch that support level again inside the NQ, 10.97105. But close below that says a change in trend would be in place. Folks, have a, a terrific uh, Monday, and I look forward to seeing you on a terrific Tuesday. Take care, folks.